Be right with you. Never fails. Every time I stop. <gasps> All right, put your money in this bag. Come on, hurry up. Come on, all of it. All right, now turn around. Face the wall. Put your hands over your head. Come on, face the wall. How tall a man was he? I don't know, Sheriff. When I saw that, that crazy mask, you know, the handkerchief with the eyes cut out, I couldn't tell a thing about him. Not a thing. Are you sure it was an automatic? Why, well, sure, I'm sure. I have eyes, haven't I? Just relax, Mr. Crown. We're only trying to help you. I'm sorry, Sheriff. He, he had a gun in one hand and a bag in the other. What kind of bag? Paper. What was it, a candy bag, a market bag? Uh, a market bag. Brown, about the medium size, I'd say. Next time he comes around, I'll show him. What makes you think there'll be a next time, Mr. Crown? Next time anybody comes around, I'll fix him, but good. I think you're better off to lose your money than your life, Mr. Crown. Yeah, I guess you're right, Sheriff. I wish more people thought so. Come on, Henry. Teletype from Las Vegas, Harry. You mean the one about Gilbert waving extradition? Yeah, that's the one. Want me to fly up? No, you better send Hawkins. That might. Oh, wait a minute. Sheriff's office, Morgan. Uh huh. Was anyone injured? Okay. Where was it, lady? Fourth and Oak. All right, we'll be right over. Uh, Another hold up. Same man? I don't know yet. You hold on the fort. Sure. <laughs> I looked up and, and saw this gun staring me in the face. I did the smartest thing I could do under the circumstances. What was that, Michelle? I fainted. Did you notice anything else besides the gun? That funny handkerchief he wore. Oh? What was funny about it? The way the eyes were cut out like a weird Halloween mask. That's all? Go what? on, Michelle. Oh, Sheriff, you'll think I'm crazy or something. But in the few seconds I saw him, there was something else. What was that? A paper bag, believe it or not. Hmm. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know who it is? Not yet. Who opened the cash register, you or him? Well, he did, I guess. After I saw that well, don't gun, touch I... the keys again. Until... But I already did. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. He probably didn't leave his fingerprints anyway. Will you let me know if you find him? When we find him, we'll need you to identify him. Me? That's right. Oh, but Sheriff, I... Well, I... now, don't get upset, Miss Shaw. We'll have to catch him first. Thank you. We'll call you later. Where was it, Frank? Shaw's cleaners. Same deal. Handkerchief, paper bag, automatic. And no clues, huh? Not a one. <laughs> well... If he stops now, he's ahead of the game. That's the trouble. Winners never quit until they become losers. In the meantime, what are we going to do? Sit here and wait for a break? Well, you've got a better idea, Harry. I sure have. Lunch. Okay, go ahead. I'll wait till Fred checks in. Thank you very much, sir. You come in and see us again sometime. Say, we've got a nice new line of all-year-round suits. I think you... Huh? All right, put your hands down. Come on, take this and put your money into it. Is that all, sir? Well, where's your fitting room? Uh, it's in the back, sir. All right, go on in there and hand out your pants. But look, sir, I... Come on, quick. Come on, hurry up. 
I shut the door. And don't come out of there for five minutes. Understand? Yes, sir. Handkerchief, paper bag, automatic. All adds up to the same man, Frank. Oh, well, he's not so smart, though, Sheriff. Why is that, Mr. Young? Well, he uh, made me remove my trousers so that I wouldn't be able to run out in the street and get help right away. So? So this. Over $300. That's more than I had in the register. I know. He would have been 18 years old today if he'd lived. But Claire, you can't go on like this every day, every night, living in the past. That's all we have, the past. Well, you'll feel much better once we move to another house. We can't even pay the rent here. Well, things are going to be different, dear. I'm working again. At the copper mine? Oh, no. Once I left there, I... Well, a man likes to better himself, even at my age. I'm happy for you, Al. What kind of job is it? Well, it's what they call classified. It's secret, you know. Well, I'm a special agent, Claire. But for heaven's sakes, don't tell anybody. Why should I tell anybody? Well, you know all those rocket ships they've been testing and those jet planes they've been building. Yes, I, I've read something about them. Well, since we live so close to the border, we've got to be on the lookout. For what? Well, for spies. Claire, you have no idea what's going on. It, it's like during the war. You've got to keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. I hope it isn't dangerous. Well, all you have to worry about is taking care of yourself. Come on. Why don't we get some dinner? Yeah, this is a lightweight tweed. Uh, it's nice and cool during the day, and yet it's plenty warm for you at night. Uh, would you pardon me for just a minute? You can go ahead, take a look at that suit. All right, Shannon, what do you want? Oh, it's a work shirt. Why don't you pay me what you owe me on the jacket first? Oh, look, see, I've been laid off for about six weeks, but I start again next Monday. Well, come back and see me when you get paid. No, I can, I can pay for the shirt. It's three bucks. Well, why don't you apply that on the jacket? No, oh, never mind. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not through talking to you yet. Now, look, I want my money for this jacket, you or I want the jacket back. It. All right, what am I going to get? Follow me. You're crying out loud. You'll get your money. Look out, now. Let me just the jacket. Now, if you think you're going to keep me on your All right, you're going to get Now, what's going on here? Oh, well, I want him arrested. Look, I didn't do anything. Right. Put your hands up here. What do you mean? What? All right, turn around. Assault and battery. He came busting into this I store. I did not. Here. Well, you saw him, didn't you? If you want to prefer charges, you'll have to come down to the sheriff's office. Well, all right, as soon as I close the store. All right, let's go. Hey, wait a minute, what about my jacket? You want your jacket? Yes. Then here, take it. All right, all right, that's enough now. Come on. Well, we weren't really fighting. We just had a little argument. Frank, the boy says it wasn't assault and battery. It was just an argument. Ask the boy if he'll stick around a while we get this cleared up, Harry. Sure. Son, would you mind waiting a little while? Sheriff's Office, Morgan. Yes, this is Sheriff Morgan speaking. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Mrs. Baxter? What's your address out there? 712 Spruce Street. Yes, I know of several places to dispose of them. Well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Baxter. I'll be right over. Thank you. 
Don't know what gets into people these days, Frank. Fighting over nothing. Read your history, Fred. It's always been that way. I'll be back in an hour. This is the last one, Sheriff. Are you sure you don't want to sell these things, Mrs. Baxter? No, we feel better giving them away. Especially if you can put them to good use. Well, we've always tried to help out the boys when they leave the work camp. This should make somebody happy. It certainly should. That's a nice jacket. Well, they'll appreciate this, Mrs. Baxter. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Two more out in the car, Harry. All right. Mr. Young come in yet? No, but he called in. Doesn't want to press charges. I thought the boy had better wait for you. Well, well I guess that clears you up, Ted. You can go home now. Thanks for sticking around. Yes, sir. If you'll take my advice, you'll stay away from that store, Ted. Yeah, I think I will. Just how did it happen? Well, I think I bought a jacket from him and uh, owed him some money on it and lost my job. So he took the jacket back. Here. Try this on for size. What's the catch? No catch. Just stay out of trouble. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Nice jacket, Frank. Yeah, belong to Tom Baxter. Baxter? Isn't that that kid that was killed in that traffic accident a couple of months ago? That's right, Harry. His folks couldn't afford it, but they bought him everything. Including a car. <laughs> Oh, be right with you. Don't shoot. Huh? Here, here's the money. What money? I just want a pack of cigarettes. Here, take it, take it. Mr. Look, I don't want the money. Here, take it, it's yours. I don't want your money. Don't run. Prince obliterated all others on the weapon. The handkerchief was useless. He didn't have the gun or the handkerchief on him when he left here. You searched him, Harry. You ought to know. Oh, I know, but he could have stashed it in the car. Or... Oh, hello, Mr. Crown. Come in. You want to see me, Sheriff? Yes. How's the boy? Well, they removed the bullet, but he hasn't regained consciousness yet. If he should die, I don't know. Well, why. nobody's blaming you, Mr. Crown. I called you in here to clear up a few things. About last night, you mean? Yes. Now, you've already told me that the boy didn't demand any money, is that right? That's right. But when I saw that gun and that handkerchief, I thought it was the same fellow again. Tell me something, Mr. Crown. Did he have the gun pointed directly at you? What's the matter? Well, as I recall, he held a handkerchief up in both his hands and, uh... And the gun was in one of those hands? Oh, yes, sir. He had the gun in his hand, all right. But I can't honestly say he had it pointed directly at me. Sheriff's Office sold some... Well, if he was holding the handkerchief, he wasn't wearing it then. Is that right? That's right. And you're positive of this? Oh, I'm positive, all right. Thank you. That was the hospital, Frank. Bad news? Shannon came, too. You want us to drop you up at your store? If you don't mind, Sheriff. Thank you. The Coast Guard cutter has been standing by while two Navy planes are flying to the scene. Now for the local news. 18-year-old Ted Shannon, who hovers between life and death from a bullet wound at the Bisbee Hospital, is under technical arrest on suspicion of armed robbery. Both the colorful handkerchief he used as a mask and the small automatic revolver have been identified by the three hold-up victims. Sad, isn't it? Claire. What? Where's that leather jacket? Well, I gave it away, Al. Why? What did you do a thing like that for? Well, you said we should forget the past. His clothes, the other things. They were reminders, so I thought that I... You I'd... thought? Did you think what that leather jacket cost? Well, I know, Al, but it was just hanging there gathering dust. 
Now the sheriff can give it to somebody. Literally. What did you say? I said the sheriff though. I gave all of Tommy's clothes to the sheriff's office. They give them away to, to the work camp boys, where they'll do some good. Are you going to work? What's the difference? You just reached in your pockets and there they were, is that right? Yes, sir. <coughs> Who put them there, Shannon? You or your accomplice? I don't know. Honest. Somebody run out on you? No. I tried to tell you. All I wanted was... You believe him? I don't know, Harry. There's still some loose ends. But the handkerchief, the gun, the kid out of work. You better stay here. Frank. Yeah? I, um, I hope you're right and I'm wrong. I hope so too, Harry. I know something's on your mind. It's about those clothes you gave me yesterday. Tommy's? Did anybody else wear them? No, Sheriff. Oh, I'm curious about the leather jacket. You're positive no one borrowed it. It's been hanging behind that bedroom door all these months. Why do you ask? Well, I gave the jacket to a young fellow last night. A few minutes later, he was shot. His name is Ted Shannon. That... That boy they told about on the radio? That's right. The boy claims he found a gun and a handkerchief in the jacket. Oh, well, it couldn't have been Tommy, Sheriff. He never owned a gun. You can ask his father. Where is Mr. Baxter? Working. I'll ask him about it when he comes home. Well, thank you. Anything you can find out would help us, just in case the boy is telling the truth. Sheriff, that boy... How badly hurt is he? Very bad, Mrs. Baxter. And if he does get well, he has nothing to look forward to but prison. You can reach me at the office. Thank you. Try to talk, son. I'm sorry, Mom. You're going to be all right. Must I go now? No, ma'am. There's a lady down the hall. She'd like to see your son. He's sleeping now. I'll tell him. Wait. If she wants to see him. Mrs. Shannon. I'm Mrs. Baxter. How is he? Resting. He's not helping himself. like he's trying to die. He mustn't. I 
Are you a friend of his, Miss Spector? No. But I know what you're going through. The waiting, the hoping, the praying. I prayed too. You have a son. I had a son. Like him. A big boy. A good boy. He is a good boy. Mom. Dad. Where were you? You didn't go to work. I asked you where you were. You don't have a job, do you, Al? Claire. I went to the hospital. That boy, Al, the one that was shot. Will he make it? If he wants to. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, he doesn't have much reason to live. Al, that gun and handkerchief the police found. He said it was in that leather jacket of Tommy's. He told you that? No, Sheriff Morgan told me. He was here, Al. He wanted to know if they were Tommies. Well, they weren't Tommies. That's what I told him. I half believed that story of yours about being a special agent. I wanted to believe it. That money, Al. Oh, Claire, I had to do something the way you sat around day after day, night after night, just wasting your life away. Now another life is wasting away, a young life. Like Tommy. Well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. What would you do if that boy in the hospital were your son? Read it first, Mr. Baxter. All right, Harry. Ted Shannon. This is Baxter. Yes. When you do something right, it helps block out the wrong. I'm going to do everything I can for your husband. He'll be back. Mm -hmm. 